last week with TNA delivering a strong show capped off with them pulling the trigger on something they'd been building up to for quite a while to a very good payoff in my opinion with the EC3 world title victory, I was optimistic that this week's show would be another good one. You had EC3's big victory celebration, and he's been consistently one of the most entertaining characters, if not the most entertaining character they've had in the last few years. Building an entire show around him? I figure, how could they go wrong? This impact should write itself. And, well, they tried. But, as is often the case with pro wrestling these days, the execution left a lot to be desired. How you felt about this one really depends on two things. How much you like EC3, and how important you think a well-crafted storyline is. Now, I'm an EC3 fan. You may not have noticed that as I've been very subtle about it. But I also put a great deal of importance on well-crafted storylines. And unfortunately, that meant that this impact only had one half of the equation. Things start out promisingly enough. EC3 makes his big speech, announces that he's running the show tonight, he's in charge, he's booking all the matches, and that has a lot of possibilities. And at first, things seem like they're going pretty well. EC3 is entertaining in his promo, funny on commentary, he strikes the right chord in messing with various people. But if the writers were going to go this route, they needed to take the storyline a lot further than that. The whole point of the angle is that EC3 has become so egomaniacal that he thinks he's untouchable and he's gone mad with power. So you needed to really push the envelope with him, go in that extra mile to get under everyone's skin and really piss people off. That way it really means something when Dixie puts a stop to it. But that's really not what happened. What we got was an opening promo, him booking Matt Hardy and Drew Galloway in handicap matches, him sitting in on commentary for a while, booking Anderson in a fair one-on-one -on -one match that he does not get involved in, booking Lashley in a fair one-on-one -on -one match that he does not get involved in, against a bum that everyone expected Lashley to beat easily, and booking himself in a couple squash matches against some ham and eggers that were played for laughs. And yes, that stuff was heelish, but it was nothing that was going to piss people off to the extent that it should have. If EC3 is in charge of the show, coming off his world title victory last week, think of all the stuff you could do with this. Think of all the stuff that character would do with this. He should have made a grand entrance in the opener with confetti and lasers and stuff. He should have had EC3 posters plastered all over the impact zone. He should have booked every single match where the heels have such a huge advantage it's ridiculous and the babyfaces lose every time. He should have had footage of himself spliced into other people's entrance videos. And that's just off the top of my head from like 10 seconds of brainstorming. And all that stuff could be done easily and on the cheap. But they didn't bother with any of it. I mean, hell, the worst thing he did all night was getting himself DQ'd against Kurt Angle. We see that kind of stuff all the time. He could have done so much more, like, like make a stipulation where Angle has to wrestle blindfolded or with both hands tied behind his back, or, or something. Something that makes it impossible for Angle to win. There were so many missed opportunities here. If you're going to do an Angle like this, for God's sake, go all the way with it. They didn't even try to get the most they could out of this. To be honest, the whole thing felt kind of half-assed. And all that culminated with the underwhelming return of Dixie Carter. First of all, I forgot how much this woman cries during her promos when she's a babyface. Yeah, her heel character got overexposed, but at least when she was a heel, she showed some guts. When she's a face, every single promo, she sounds like she's about to burst into tears. I don't know what she's going for, but I really wish she'd stop doing that. Next, Dixie has turned over a new leaf realize the error of her ways or whatever, and she's not going to let EC3 get away with all this stuff anymore. All right. But if that's the way she feels, then why the hell did she put him in charge of this week's show and give him the power to do whatever the hell he wanted in the first place? Plot hole. So that made no sense whatsoever. And then Dixie says that she has hired a new authority figure for Impact to put a stop to this type of stuff. And I can see why they're doing that, but the idea does not appeal to me. Personally, I was really enjoying the fact that over the last few months, the TV show did not have an authority figure. It felt refreshing to me. It felt different. 
It made Impact stand out from all the other wrestling shows. Creatively, I don't think they were hurting for not having one. And it's a really played out idea if you think about it. WWE has done everything humanly possible to burn that gimmick to the freaking ground. So I was happy for Impact to continue on without an authority figure. It didn't seem to me that the show really needed one. But like it or not, it's going to have one. And they wouldn't even tell us who it is. They left that on a cliffhanger. And I'm sorry, but that's really not a compelling cliffhanger. One, because the spoilers are already out there. Two, because, like I said, WWE has beaten this angle to death so many times that the idea just isn't interesting anymore. Oh my god, who's the new Impact Authority figure gonna be? Does it matter? We've had a million of them. Yay for storyline progression, I guess, but there's no real drama in this situation. At least not enough to make a compelling hook for next week. Now, maybe there would be if they'd really sold how power-mad EC3 had become until the fans were so desperate to see him get his comeuppance that they just couldn't take it anymore. But they really didn't do that. So the promise of someone coming in to put EC3 in his place just didn't have the impact that it should have. This is how the world ends. Not with a bang, but with a whimper. And the wrestling wasn't anything to write home about either this week. Matt Hardy gets an EC3's face about wanting a world title shot, so EC3 puts him in a handicap match with the Dirty Heels. The match was okay. I guess we were supposed to hate EC3 for this, but... I don't want to see Matt Hardy going for the world title, so I was fine with it. Which was not the reaction I was supposed to have. Now, EC3 booking Drew Galloway against the Revolution was a little more like it. And this part was really funny, too. The Rising are trying to make their breakup sound so devastating, like it's this huge wrestling tragedy or something. And it didn't ring true at all. They were only together for a few months, so them being forced to break up really doesn't mean that much. So EC3 just pokes fun at them for this, mocking them for being so upset, and then booking Drew against three guys just to be an asshole, even though those three guys don't mean anything right now. This was the kind of thing he should have been doing in every match, but again, they didn't take it far enough. He should have made this match impossible for Drew to win. Drew gets the pin, EC3 restarts the match under no DQ rules, and he just keeps going like that until Drew ultimately gets his ass kicked. Easy. Doesn't that make more sense? Instead, they had Drew go over here and get away with it, showing that EC3 was not abusing his power nearly as much as you'd think he would. Then when Anderson wants a world title shot, EC3 books him in a match against Bram, which seemed like a perfectly normal TV match to make. But yeah, Bram beat the shit out of Anderson, but not because of anything EC3 did. Bram probably would have done that anyway. And then when Lashley wants a world title shot, EC3 books him in a match against Tyrus. Oh, darn. Poor Lashley. How can he ever hope to beat a loser like Tyrus with no stipulation and no odds stacked against him in a fair one-on-one -on -one match? This alleged superstar is an unworthy opponent. So Lashley wins. EC3 doesn't do anything to make it hard for him. And that's it. That's all they do with it. Really, TNA writers? You couldn't come up with anything more creative than that? Robbie E. and Jesse Goddard's had a street fight that EC3 had nothing to do with. It was okay, I guess, but it was nothing you'd remember by next week. I still don't give a shit about Robbie. I'm still not impressed with Jesse, and this feud still feels like a waste of time to me. Because you get the camera off Robbie, it really gets on my nerves. Also, there was a knockouts match that EC3 didn't bother himself with, probably because he cared about it as little as I did. Velvet Sky vs. Madison Rain? This had piss break written all over it, and it was every bit as boring and uninteresting as it looked on paper. And can Velvet please stop using the stunner already? If you wanted her to change her finisher, fine, but give her one she can actually execute well. 
That is the clunkiest looking stunner I've ever seen. It looks like crap. Did she even practice that thing before she started using it? Come on, Velvet, how long have you been doing this, for God's sake? And with that, Velvet has now gotten over on Angelina, gotten over on Madison. So, there's no real reason to continue the feud at this point. I'm not seeing any more story here. I really don't know where you go with them now. See, this is where Velvet partnering with a new girl would have come in handy. It would have given them more things to do with this. As it is, after just two matches, it feels like the feud is already out of gas. Hopefully they won't drag it out any longer, but sadly I'm not optimistic about that. I'd rather get a high colonic with a hot poker! Then Kurt Angle exercises his rematch clause, but we don't get much of a match before EC3 just gets himself DQ'd. Heelish, yes, but after EC3 leveled up against Angle just last week, this felt like he immediately took a step back, undoing the progress he made with that match. Shut up and follow me. Oh, I am. I am. This just wasn't the direction that I was hoping you'd go in. With an angle where EC3 is in charge and has all the booking power on the show, they could have done a lot of really interesting things here. But honestly... This just felt phoned in. It didn't seem like there was much thought put into anything that happened. It felt more like EC3 was just goofing off than being the legitimate top heel that he should have been in this situation. And that wasn't his fault. The writers just dropped the ball here. I had high hopes for this impact, but in my opinion, this show just wasn't that good. Over. Out.